Hi, welcome to Smoking with Swami. I'm Swami Chaitanya and my partner Nikki Lestretto and our beautiful host here today. Or no, we're the host, our beautiful guest today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I'm gonna try and pronounce this name correctly, right? It's D Dusso. I'm working on my French accent. Okay. Anyway, she uh, originally hails from uh, Toronto, Canada, and uh, is now been uh, all over the you know talk shows and so on promoting her book Ganji Yoga, and we're very privileged to have her here. And uh, she was very excited to start smoking with some Swa Swami Select. <laughs> so, Nikki, you got a question for her right here? Right off the top. Right off the. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like. How did you discover, I mean, obviously, did, blah, ganja yoga, how'd that come from? Where did it start? So my mom got me a yoga VHS tape in 1995. Okay. I was 15 years old 15. and not good at athletics or movement. I can't ice skate. I didn't do sports. So I finally found something that I could do because huh. you were alone. If you f wobbled or fell, no right. one was there. There's no team coach right. yelling at you. So I just loved the physical practice, but very quickly got into the spiritual practice. I got a yin yang tattoo when I was 18. I got into meditation and mysticism and the whole thing. But it started with like a, a VHS tape, wow. which is so random. Um, and then the weed part, I got into at age 27, so quite a Not lot later. Not till 27. Here you go. Here's Thank your you. Room. Now I'm really? making up for lost time. You get it <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, not until 27. So you were doing yoga quite seriously until then? I mean, did you really get into it at 15? And I did, yeah. I were there really other did. kids doing it? Did you have other friends at all that were doing it? There weren't really other people doing it. It was just starting to become popular. If you remember yeah. in the 90s, some fitness instructors right. were starting to sure, bring it into right. the West. So I memorized that tape and ended up teaching it to my friends and my friend's mom. Uh -huh. wow. Just sort of, <clears throat> I didn't know I wanted to be a yoga teacher, but I was like, we should all do this. It's meditating, it's mindfulness. It felt really oh, right. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it's been did a practice. You, did the pra um, asanas come easily to you? They did, yeah, yeah, they did. Interesting. <coughs> because I'm kind of tall and noodly yeah, already. Yeah. Well, maybe a previous yeah, incarnation, of, of too. Of course, you could yeah. Have had oh, a, yeah. You've been a yoga, you know, yogini in the previous incarnation. So then did you take formal other courses with a specific teacher? I did, yeah. So <coughs> through my 20s, just went to yoga studios. Like, you know, a lot of people check out different practices and studios. So right. I tried, you know, Bikram, Mashtanga, uh, yeah, Hatha, yeah. the whole, all the things that were popular. And ended up, my teacher training was a Tantra tradition. Mm -hmm. And I had read about Tantra and, and studied sexuality, so I was knew what it was but I thought I knew what it was huh. and then the lineage <laughs> our training had nothing to do with sex That's right. not a That's single right. thing yeah. it right. was all about internal energies That's and right. chakras shakti. and shakti, shakti and all of this so I was like oh okay so this is the yeah. uh, uh, well actually the, the real name for tantra is, that is more common in India is called Sri Vidya right and that is the teaching Sri is the teaching of the mother goddess Right? Ah, so Shri that, Vidya. Yeah, Shri Avidya is teaching or learning, right. and Shri is a name for Lakshmi, among others, but it's also an honorific name for the sacred teaching of the goddess, right? And mm -hmm. so Shri Vidya is about, yes, it's exactly about integrating the chakras and moving the energy and, and using your own natural energy with harmonic with natural energy and so on. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah. So wow. then you also, while we were talking before, you said you were in, involved with Chris Bennett for a while who wrote this huh. amazing book about yoga and, not yoga, about g cannabis a, a, in <coughs> uh, sacred traditions, not just Hinduism, but also in Christianity, Islam, and all these other traditions. So. Definitely, yeah, that's totally <coughs> solidified it. Um, you know, getting high and doing yoga. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm 27, been doing yoga for 12 years. Wow. I get high and realize like, it's better. It's trippy, I feel the mystical stuff, Amazing. you know. I feel it. It's not just, you know, before so I... So how did you end up getting high at 27? Was I just... was nervous, very nervous, because I tried it as a high school student, and we were talking about weed that's coated in pesticides. I probably had some oh, crappy, gross... Yeah. Well, we hot-knifed hash oh. when I was 15 or 16, and I'd had a bad trip. I yep. Essentially a seizure, knocked over the coffee table. Oh, really geez. bad. And then every time I smoked after, it would be the paranoia of, is, am I going to have that experience again? Right. Sure. So sure. I just couldn't handle it. It was sure. just kind of too high-strung. Sure. You know, all that adrenaline and, and hormones. But after doing... Team yoga for that many years you calmed down enough when it happened again in, in a different context with and I, I could, you could feel the fear will I will will I get paranoid but just breathing through it like uh -huh. okay so far so good I remember saying to the, my boyfriend at the time my, my teeth are chattering this is new I, I, so far so good and just riding the wave much more you know yeah. maturely and, uh -huh. and with the yoga nice. behind me the meditation wow. behind me to be able to ride the wave of being high because THC is a right. psychedelic right exactly it's, it's a 
psychotropic. It, psychotropic. It, yeah. It, yeah. It definitely uh, it is. Yeah, a, yeah. It alters your perception alters. in some way. So we were just talking also about now pranayama. Pranayama is the breathing exercise. Is the actual science of breathing and how you practically do it. And how do you combine that with the cannabis? You were telling us. Yeah. So uh, in Toronto, Keep I started breathing that joint. Oh, you're right. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> Well, I got to pause. Yeah, no, it's okay. Pause. The, this is the pause that truly refreshes, <laughs> actually. <laughs> to borrow Leave you in suspense, a phrase, right? Yeah, right. So, so we're smoking cuvee, by the way. This is oh, a tasty. Are. I didn't have a chance oh, even because we were rolling. Cuvee. But yeah. this is a smooth, delicious flavor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I was saying at my classes in Toronto, where I started, we would. Uh, form a circle and even before we pass the cannabis vaporizer we would do a yo know, what's called the yogic three-part breath so the inhale would start you know we'd get a couple good belly breaths going with your That's the first part. yeah exactly using the diaphragm so the belly fills and the side ribs fill and you know we could all do that right now people you know people mm -hmm. at home could yeah. could do that yeah, breath anytime. Doing it right now, exactly. actually, yeah. if you're trying to do deep breaths the easiest thing is to start by exhaling ah you exhale first and then so your Just stomach the is in, right? right? Yeah. And then you put your stomach out, yeah. and that automatically starts to fill. Yes, so it's it feels too, nice, right? doesn't yeah, it? Right. Yeah, so you start, helpful, yeah. so you start down with the belly and the diaphragm. That's right, and, and then, then the second part is to bring it more into the mid-chest. So sort of like a, you know, that same inhale as though it's a little yeah. wave. And then as you exhale, the mid-chest goes down, mm. and the belly goes mm. down, like a little two-part wave. Mm. And then it, the final third is like you open up the chest and right. the shoulders in the back. Yeah. Right, and take it in that way. So. And even without cannabis, just right. to open up the channels, right. the lungs and the capillaries to prepare for the cannabis experience. So you take in a lot more oxygen to begin with, but you also okay, take in this in. mysterious stuff called... Prana. prana. Yeah, so what would it. you say prana is? What is your take prana on prana? Prana is vitality, you know, and you can get prana through breath, and you can get it through, to me, beauty and mm -hmm. nature. Mm -hmm. Sex is one way, mm -hmm. you know, uh, delicious food nourishing foods right, you know right. it's, it's 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 but it's not so literal just that like it's well, not it's, like food i see it as likely helped it definitely helped the breath uh, no that yeah, i just got this beautiful hit uh, <laughs> <laughs> it did like, right. I did, and i didn't even do like a whole lot of them but just but, a bit but prana is like the invisible energy it's the spirit the essence of whatever it is you're involved in it, it has it and so most often it's seen as part of of the air right yes. so now you okay so you do these three deep breaths and then with the cannabis and then we passed the, well, at the time was the vaporizer bag, because this was the, you know, One mid, of the mid volcano yeah, 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 the mm -hmm. mid-2000s, so now we have much better technology. Right. Um, and then people were invited to start if they wanted to just do a, the first part breath and take the volcano vapor in that way, or mm -hmm. if they were able to do two, a more seasoned smoker, or even a little sip of the third, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then down, and uh -huh. then just pass it on, or, you know, and just sort of, we all kind of got high in this quiet cere breathing ceremony that you could... Do your own, you know. And this would start the, the that would session. would start the session, yeah. So someone oh, new to cannabis really might only take a little, not even a full belly. <clears throat> right. But someone else might. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. Be able to do so it. You, there it is. You self dose really in that. Self dose. Yeah, yeah. 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 You should one. do that when we're judging for the cannabis Ooh. cups. Ooh. You know, like really think about not only everything else we're thinking about, the, but that the breathing and. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Give yeah. each one the equal fair chance. Yeah. On okay. Breath. So now you've had the people in the circle, and they're, they're seated. They got the breath. They're calmed down. And so, like for example, what would be the first asana that you would then do physically? Right. Good question. Yeah, just to be clear, I don't do that smoking circle in San Francisco anymore. Things have kind of changed. So the 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 situation or, or rituals changed. Now we just chill and get high. Uh, we okay. have joints. Yeah. It's much more normalized. You uh -huh, know? I see. Just as a quick aside, but in Toronto when I started. In 2009, it was a lot of people who might look like or self-identify or talk like what you might call hippies. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like well, into I kind astrology, of know what you mean when you say yeah, yeah, yeah. New, new age, comfort, new age, yeah, new yeah. agey people. Mm -hmm. That was 2009, uh, and then now in San Francisco, I, my classes, it's just the most normal, whatever you want to call normal. There's like really? tech. Huh. Just goes to bars and wow. like just adventurous, but like just like dresses very normal. But they get high, and they like to get high and get high with you. And well, do well, yoga. that's what we very see nice. in San Francisco. That's so awesome. How pervasive that's through the culture it all great is. To hear. Every 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 group, every social state level, and so on. Well, so. they'll make more interesting technology. <laughs> that's true. Here in the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah they're getting high and doing well, yoga. Well, no, it's clear. We yeah. all know yeah. that LSD and cannabis have been a major, major stimulant for people like Steve Jobs and so on. So. Uh, many others too, obviously. And it's yoga part of too. You get yoga and meditation in there. Right, exactly. And you can almost get. A so now, after society. everybody's getting high, just right. Just so a little more technical. What yeah, would you do? It. 
So it's different every time, and ah, I do that good. intentionally. Good, good. Uh, the music's different. Uh -huh. You know, the venues are the same. It's this space here on Thursdays, and then a different space on Wednesdays. But uh, for the most part, I introduce mindfulness and embodiment before any movements. So we usually start with some form of. We always start with some form of meditation. Usually sitting in a conventional seat, or sometimes it, we on Thursday nights I get everyone to lay down. Oh, sometimes nice. it's a child's pose too, just a still mm. pose that you could use props to be comfortable. Whatever the pose is. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then I get everyone to close their eyes if they're comfortable or if, mm -hmm. you know, maybe you're a little nervous. It's like your first time to yoga. You don't get high in public often. Now she's telling you to close. You can just look down. Uh -huh. So I understand that people might be nervous, but That's we've had this really half nice an hour. That's really nice to consider. No, yeah, very yeah. Sensitive. We've had this I half like an hour that. to get high. We've had tea and edibles and talking about weed and passing products. So people are kind of bonding with community. Um, and then as we start the practice, you know, go, going more inward and turning off that socializing or any of the nervousness, just kind of letting it go, breathing deeply, like you were saying, to bring more oxygen into the body and prana into the body, right? And just tapping more inward. So I always tell people that what I say for, in terms of poses is optional. Mm. We're just here to relax. Yeah. That's what it is about. So yeah. now your eyes are closed and you're invited to exactly. relax. The rest mm. is gravy. Uh -huh. Well, I found right. also, you know, having done some yoga training, that when you're really, really uh, high from the cannabis, you actually create new asanas. Mm, or yeah. you go into an asana mm. from a different place. Right, yes, right? exactly. Yeah, no, you're right. And uh, so it's... Now, I also still want to get back to the... Now, there, I think any... There are other yoga teachers. Oh, you can't do, you can't, you can't smoke dope and, 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 and do yoga. It's completely contrary to the whole, what is it? So, do people ever ask you that to say? Not that often, really? which is interesting. Good. I have good, a few like that people who feel strongly about it are realizing that they, to make a public argument about it, it doesn't really make sense right yeah. now. Like yeah. cannabis has, has just has too many proven health properties to even right, right. begin to uh -huh. and be so able to talk overcoming that uh, negative uh, stigma. So you got a pest to try to get. I'm a lightweight Someone's compared to you guys anyway, him, so you know? he's just being uh, uh, considerate. Yeah, right. yeah. uh, uh, uh. Well, <laughs> no, he's just getting cool. high. <laughs> That's what happens. <laughs> so, but I, now, Chris Bennett's book is super important, uh, and I think anyone who hasn't come up, what exact name of it? That now? was called Cannabis and the Soma Solution. Right, and oh, there yes. was another right. one about one. cannabis uh, in uh, various religions, the tree or something like that. You're right. Uh, yeah, that, uh, and that one's oh, also extremely good. Oh, that's a really good. special yeah, one, right? Very good. And yeah. so, but it is tracing the use of cannabis uh, or actually entheogenic, consciousness altering, uh, um, herbs and roots and so on through history and how cannabis has right. really been one of the major ones uh, for Hinduism, for Islam, uh, for Judaism, e even uh, there's a whole thing about uh, cannabisum in the Bible, that this word cannabisum, which has always been translated as something called calamus, another kind of herb, but in fact, even if you do any sort of sound similarity, cannabisum is cannabis quite literally and so uh, it, it's part of what they call holy anointing oil right but the other thing in, in, in India today still they make this preparation called bhang b-h-a-n-g bhang uh, not the chocolate company here no no but bhang which is a uh, a, can a cannabis smoothie <laughs> right it's delicious. Yeah, delicious because yeah, they mix it. With, they can mix it with yo yogurt so. and and ghee and so on and so forth. Cardamom, rosemary, cardamom, rosemary, <laughs> and so on. Rosemary. I want to say something, you know, because we're getting a little off subject again. It's oh. just bringing it back in, which is that on the subject is that in these old days, also these yogis have been smoking cannabis and doing yoga for years, and I. But I. That's what I want to question. Okay, so most. From my experience, not all yogis in India smoke cannabis or hashish or whatever they're smoking. They don't. That's right. It's actually a small percentage, and it's primarily Shaivites, followers of Shiva, and so well, so of those those few that are also actually practicing asanas, because not all of them practice asanas as well. I mean, this is the Western right. conception that every yogi is a guy that's you know pretzels. tied up like a pretzel yeah. and he's, he's smoking dope, but it's not true. So, um, but the, of the ones that do, they've been doing it for thousands of years. Thousands of years, don't you think? Yes, and yes. And so you you got to go over there and meet some of those guys. Yeah, that would be and so... And I bet they would trip out on you. And well, really, what, to see what, a, a beautiful, you know, dakini here doing right. these, like, poses and all, 
Well, understanding the connection. Hmm. It would be interesting to find yeah. out. I was telling you I'd been to India before, but it was under different contexts. Yeah. It's not really a spiritual pursuit yeah. context. Yeah. So it was, um, you need to go to the Himalayas now. Uh -huh, exactly. Mm. Thank you. Well, the ba what we're talking about, the Babas, the holy men, the sadhus in India, and they um, they do mostly smoke chillum. Yeah. Right now, Chillum. We did a smoke in Chillum with Swami, right? And that's that straight pipe. And they virtually always mix it these days, at any rate, with tobacco. Right, uh, certainly, right. in the old days, before tobacco got to India, because it does come from <coughs> the Americas, uh, they must have mixed the can the chadas, as they call it, the hash, with all kind of other herbs. Probably a lot of with cannabis as well, or other herbs. And we we're talking about ephedra being used, and props, even opium poppies and so on, mm. would have been mixed. Mm. But I'm pretty sure in the ancient texts of the Rig Veda, what they call soma <coughs> uh, is a preparation which is basically the basic ingredient is almost always cannabis. There could be other things mixed, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so the the. And it's no coincidence that Lord Shiva is the lord of both ganja and cannabis and yoga. And yoga. That's yeah. right. right. See, right. there you go. He figured it out. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And actually, Shiva's preferred uh, way of ingesting cannabis is through uh, the, the bhang, the, the, the smoothie. Uh, there are a lot well, of other ones. him, too. Uh, well, actually, uh, not, he's we'll never. We'll have to ask him. We'll have to ask, ask Shiva? Yeah. Okay, we'll ask Shiva. But Next Gil, time you uh, Mang in. Mangalanan, yeah. uh, Mahanchi Mangalanan said that he, uh, as far as he was, the teaching is that Shiva mostly takes from bang, that is the cannabis okay. smoothie. But the Babas are mostly doing chillums, which is mixed with tobacco. And it is for many of the Babas, it's a wake and bake situation, right? Uh, and they, you know, they're doing chillum all day long. And it's a... Uh, and it, and but the tobacco is new because it's new to this whole <coughs> right. world. But on the Actually, other hand, so tobacco, likewise, before. here in this country, has a really bad rap. But as an herb, tobacco is like any herb. It has its real use, and people can abuse it, right? Yeah, when it's grown organically. Right, uh, right. It's, and it's they don't have additives else. to make it burn and all yeah. those sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Tobacco is just a, a wonderful, wonderful herb. But, of course, you know, it is, <coughs> it is addictive in its own way. Um, but anyway, I wanted to say that this ritual of smoking is quite ritualistic. And, for example, you always have to pass it around to your right. And you normally cover your heart and you, you, know, mm. you say a mantra when, when mm. you pass it, right? And so they put, it's not just getting high. It's like honoring the substance which is causing that, honoring the group of people who are sharing it and putting a spiritual vibe on it as you I pass see, it. You could, it could be a new yoga pose. The chillum, and you have to hold oh, this. Oh, yeah. Uh, you hold one leg up at the same time or something. Uh, you know. So anyway, yeah. Shiva, we're talking yeah. about Shiva, Lord of the Dance, who is also <laughs> Lord of <laughs> Yoga. And he's a, um, the great Lord Shiva. And he's seen also as the uh, the dancing, the Lord of the Dance, right? Yes. Uh, Shiva um, the Tandava, Nataraj. right? Nataraj. Yeah. Nataraj, right? Yeah. With 108 poses that he has for that. Uh, so, But that thing. When you dance, you express, and when you dance high from cannabis, you are then much more in totally. the flow, right? Yeah. <coughs> and and the music. Shakti. <laughs> Do the people get high consistently throughout the class, or just in the beginning? At my or? class, I I mean I've seen it done all different ways now, having partnered with and you know explored mm -hmm, different mm -hmm. uh, people doing cannabis enhanced offerings. But at my class on the Wednesdays, we get high in social community for half an hour, and then um, do our practice and then at the very end before final meditation we get up for a silent toke because I found when we st at first I just said okay guys we're going to take five minutes to use the restroom put on socks we're going to meditate everyone was chatter 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 yes, and then no one's right. going to meditate right, right, so right. my very wise friend Lou who took over ganja yoga in Toronto when I moved uh, to San Francisco really she's like she just says, do it silently. And I was like, you are yeah. a genius. Yeah, I really know. She, but then my friend yeah. Iris down in San Diego, she has herbally enhanced yoga. And she uh, says, okay, guys, and now we're transitioning you know, into the next thing. It might be a good time to take a toke. And everyone, her vibe Sweet. is more and more like a, she's a surfer girl. Has their own San thing. Diego, yeah. as you wish, yeah, their own little piece. But then you were telling yeah. us in Colorado you did a workshop with two other That's right, yoginis. Two other Why don't you talk about that for yeah, a little Yeah, Ganjasana and uh, Twisted Sister, uh, Shelly and Rachel, yeah. They were awesome. We did a, th a three-way collaborative class. And you said you didn't even know them before. I never met them except through, the, except through Instagram. 
Yeah. Uh, and the first one had this really beautiful like flow that with all levels, which was really beautiful. And then I'm like a very kind of alignment, yin, mindful sort of. And then the last one was a super shamanic meditation. And it just really was like a three part zinger. It was, it was well, that's great. That's great. Yeah, so that's it's great. so interesting that at this time you should all emerge. And there's probably going to be other little blossoms like you coming. Amazing up. ones. There's a Liz McDonald for twenty. Yeah, there's just so that's many. Yeah. No, it's, it is. It it's sounds just, beautiful. I would actually. I mean, I guess I had been doing ganja asana for ever. Exactly. I mean, I'm, I'm not much of a yogi myself, I have but to say, but they go well so well. When right? I do, I'd certainly yes, absolutely. Well, you do exercise. That's what you yeah. call it. You don't call it yoga. You call yeah, it your exercises. Certain, right. But it incorporates certain yoga right. poses. Right. Right. See, I, I don't gets really, their own little rift but, out uh, you know, I'm time, not really right? doing a lot of asanas. I have in the past done asanas, but mm. I don't, I, I'm just so active on the farm. that right. I, He I, is. I, I, yeah. You should see this guy. Really, no one ever sees the other side of Swami. Let me well, tell you. this is all the my part, I know, this is, he's usually <laughs> wearing something that looks like a drop cloth. You know, it's so dirty. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because he's been out in the garden, or he's been on the tractor, he's been, like, fixing the solar power system, or climbing up a ladder to clean the roof or something. <laughs> Seriously, no. <laughs> yeah, Just so. to fill you all in, no one ever gets to see the other side. Right, well, right. we should do a show about the other side as well. <laughs> oh, why? When I had to replace the, the sink? Yeah, the sink. Or the put toilet. I had to put a new week. toilet He's, in not too long even, ago. Yes, exactly. All right. So Cast anyway, that's no where bar. I get my exercise. But <laughs> for me, it's like uh, I meditate in the morning, right? But uh, before I before I smoke. I usually only smoke after breakfast, you know, after my coffee and my breakfast. But in the evening, when I when I meditate at sometime 11 or midnight or something like that, uh, I don't smoke specifically to do that, but I've obviously been smoking all day, so we have a, a, a late night uh, joint and so on. So I'm always stoned when I do the midnight, uh, midnight <laughs> meditation. One of the things I like to do is see, is observe the difference. Because a whole lot of, of, of yoga consciousness is observing your inner self and observing the inside of your body. So that when I would do a yoga asana, what I do is I visualize within my mind that asana, but I also visualize what it's doing to my organ that is being addressed by that particular position. Right, right on. And at the same time, visualize all the muscles around it relaxing and just being in that place. So you see mm -hmm. it everything, you see it all from inside. For sure, yeah. Right? No, I get and, it. and you can feel the pulsing of, of your of your of your veins and all of that sort of thing. Like an Alex and, Gray painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but ha being stoned gives you more visual. Yeah. Oh yeah. Of all of that, yeah. right? And so, um, and for me, it's it's a meditation of, of a visualization at that point. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All based on the Sri Yantra. Yeah. Which is part of part of uh, Sri Vidya and and tantric teaching. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Let's just face it. Just about that. everything's better with good cannabis. <laughs> yeah. So. Right. right. Yeah. But th that, that there is a, there is a, just a, there is a saying that uh, what is it uh, uh, mantra yantra plus mantra is Tantra. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been really, really, really fun to talk to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such good work you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for joining Thanks. us, and uh, see you again soon. Okay.